So NVIDIA is down a lot. It's trading right now at $762 versus the peak of $950. It's lost $200 billion of value in a single day. So the big question here with NVIDIA is, is this a good time to buy the dip? Should you buy the dip? The stock is now at 760, way, way better than 950, right? Well, I agree that, you know, 950, if you bought it here, you're probably not feeling too happy about yourself. And 760 is definitely a better price, but is this the right time to buy the dip or not? Now, one of the things we always share in my community is the fact that we like to buy good companies over the course of a long period of time. For example, this is a stock we started buying back in October of 2020 when the price was $135 per share, which means we're not that you know emotionally attached to 760 versus 950. We're still good. Yeah, we're still up a lot. Uh, so you know, up 450%. But the question here, you know, it's a timing question right now, right? Is it a good time to start loading up NVIDIA and what kind of pace you should be doing at? So looking at NVIDIA right here, you know, revenues are up 125% over the past year. That's a strong performance. Uh, operating expenses are only up 15%. So any company that can give me 125% increase in revenue with only 15% increase in operating expenses, that's good. It's a scalable business. Uh, operating income is up 700%. Cash is up 100%. Free cash flow is up 600%. Net income is up 600%. Total assets are up 60%. Not bad, you know, even the debt is down 7%. Uh, the current PE is 63, which is a little bit on the expensive side. But if you look at forward PE, it's trading at sub 25 forward PE. And in my opinion, forward PE is way more credible of a source uh, of a company's true valuation than current PE. So, at, you know, 24, uh, 25 PE forward, not a bad deal. Now, on the price to sales, it is a little bit on the expensive side. But, you know, if they keep growing at this pace, that number is going to shrink as well. Now, we look at this 25 Ford PE, but is it expensive? Is it not expensive? We have to compare it to the companies that are in the same category, right? So let's go here to the compare tool here in Stock MVP. Let's look at NVIDIA, Microsoft, and Google. I think they're good comparables. Look, Google's market cap is $2 trillion. Microsoft is $3 trillion. And NVIDIA is $2 trillion. So three behemoths, massive, massive blue chip companies. So let's go over it. So the first point of comparison is revenue growth. So revenue growth on the NVIDIA side is 125% versus Microsoft 11.5 and Google's 8.7. So it's definitely growing way faster than Microsoft and Google, no doubt. Operating expenses are up 15% of the past uh, year, but you know if you have a 125% increase in revenues, that's fine. A growth of operating income, you know, Google is up 12%, Microsoft is 21%, great numbers, by the way, but nowhere near NVIDIA, 680%, they're growing at an insane pace. Net income, 23% growth on Google, 23% growth, or rather, sorry, 22% growth on Microsoft, 600% for NVIDIA. So the trend continues, free cash flow, up 15%, up 13%, up 600%. So NVIDIA is exponentially, you know, uh, performing better in every category. Uh, cash and investments are down on both companies. It's up 100% on NVIDIA, as you would expect. Uh, total assets are up 60%, which is higher than these two with 10 and 30. Uh, look, at the end of the day, the total debt here is down a little bit, 4% in Google. It's up 50% in Microsoft's case, it's staggering $60 billion liability. But NVIDIA is dropping its debt by another, you know, 6.7%. Not bad at all. Looking at margins, Google is operating at 27.5% operating margin. Uh, Microsoft is way better at 44%. That's great. NVIDIA's margin is 54%. It has better margins than both of these. Uh, price to sales, nowhere near. Look, the price to perfection at 31.2. But as I'm saying, this will come down as their growth continues. But right now, they're definitely priced higher on the price to sales. But if you look at forward PE, where I think is the truth lies, you'll find out that forward PE-wise, this is the true comparison. So Google is trading a forward PE of 20. Microsoft is at 30. And Microsoft, I agree, should be priced higher than Google in the current situation. But NVIDIA is currently priced right there in the middle. So if you look at forward PE, in my opinion, which is the best uh, category to uh, compare companies, I don't know. NVIDIA seems to be priced better than most companies out there. In fact, they're priced in between Google and Microsoft. And as we just saw here in the numbers, it killed them in every single category. So on the comparison side, I don't have anything bad to say about NVIDIA. Now, we ran a quick DCF here just to show you what is the current price reflecting. So a DCF essentially is just a, you know, it's a discounted cash flow valuation. So essentially you take all the cash flows from the future, 
you bring them back to today's value, uh, you add it all up, you add some future growth, and then you get the valuation, right? So what we showed you here is that this number, $760, the current share price uh, factors in this number, 37% EBITDA growth. So the current price of the stock is based on 37% EBITDA growth every single year for the next five years. That's not an easy thing to do when you look five years down the road. It's hard to predict. It's a high growth number, even though now it seems easy for NVIDIA. But you know, if the trend continues, if the you know the AI revolution continues, there's no reason that the you know the hardware infrastructure stuff that they do they're not going to go away. So I, I don't think it's unreasonable, but it is a high high request, no doubt. It's a tall order. Now on the five year valuation model, we assume the 35 percent growth on the conservative side, which is just what we saw earlier. And then we said, okay, what happens if Nvidia grows at 50 percent a year for the next five years? And then give us the kind of the range of where the stock is going to be in five years based on this valuation model we got in stock MVP called the SEF. So based on the most conservative model, we have a 50% upside for the next five years, which basically just like a 10 year annual return, something you get on the S&P 500. So that's the floor. So in five years, Nvidia is at least a $1,100 stock. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind about that. And um, what happens in the middle ground? Well, that's a $1,700 stock, $1,800 stock. That's a 130% return. But on the 50% growth scenario, if, if NVIDIA actually grows 50% per year for the next five years, that's a 24, uh, $2,400 stock, which means a 220% return on a stock like NVIDIA. I mean, that's very exciting. Now, on the scorecard, this is one of the best companies we have here on the company scorecard here in Stock MVP. Essentially, they kill everything. Revenue, net profit margin. It is 10 out of 10. Everything is a 10 out of 10. Assets to liabilities, cash to debt, short interest is very low. Institutional shareholding is high. Everything here is great, except the price to earnings. But I just want to show you that the way we score this is if the price to earnings goes below 30, then we give you a 5, and below 10, we'll give you a 10. But it's not going to go below 10, obviously. But as you just saw, the forward PE is actually below 30. So within a few months, within a year, this is going to be a 95 score, not a 90 score. So they are getting better. So I absolutely love this company. So the question here is, well, that in that case, we should buy the dip, right? Well, not necessarily. I don't think you should buy the dip. As, as I just said, I think you should dollar cost average slowly over time, which means if you look at the stock price right here, you buy 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 at all times, you buy the, across the entire spectrum of the pricing. And then eventually, like uh, like we have in our community, your pricing is going to be way, way closer to the bottom than to the top without timing the market. And the way you can do it, essentially, you can decide, well, look, if my, you know, if my uh, price target is $760, then anything below that, I'm going to be dollar cost averaging a little bit faster. Anything above it, I'm going to be dollar cost averaging a little bit faster. Sorry, a little bit slower. So essentially buying more into weakness and buying less into strength, but buying a little bit, tiny bit every single month, every single week. So that over time, you have a low cost basis. And here's the trick. If you haven't picked a bad company, if NVIDIA is in fact legitimate, and it is a great company, then that is going to guarantee you a very low cost basis in what seems to be a good stock. Doing anything else, like trying to time the market and jump on it right now, hoping it bounces back to 950, I don't think that's the right move. We don't know. Nobody has a crystal ball. We don't know where the market is going to move, but you know, to each their own. I hope you found that useful. Uh, you can try out Stock MVP, the platform I've been showing you here. Uh, we've been using this for compare mode and all these things. Of course, it's open for you to try out. Uh, Stock MVP is a platform that we built for you guys. We are retail investors. We built it for you guys. You are exactly like us. You're also retail investors. Uh, Stock-MVP.com. Uh, you can get it for one week for free uh, to try it out before we charge you a single dollar. And then use the code TOM50. TOM50 will give you 25% off for your lifetime of use. And I'll see you in the next one.